Welcome into another edition of Sports Junkie. Steve Sparky Pfeiffer from the Wendy's Big Show weekday afternoons from 2 to 6, along with Gary Ellison, the former Packer and Badger running back, as well as Robbie Makloff. The guy sitting next to me is Greg Geeson here of the Racine Journal Times. He's the resident baseball guy here at the Journal Times. Time to talk some Brewers baseball as the Brewers pull off a trade. Uh, sending Francisco Rodriguez with a year left on his deal to the Detroit Tigers. Uh, and they get back Javier Betancourt, a 20-year-old infielder uh, that plays second base and shortstop. Some third, but mainly second and shortstop. Not a power guy. Uh, but 280. And a player to be named later, who I'm hoping is better than the player they got. Um, Greg, your thoughts on the trade? Saves money. You know, Saves money. Yes. You're, you don't need a you don't need a closer. I you mean, don't need for a all indications. Jeremy Jeffers you're, you're, close. Yes, and you're rebuilding, mm -hmm. so it's not like you're looking to contend. You don't need a closer until you have. It's one of the, the last idea. pieces you get. Yeah, you don't need it. So if you're building and you're still acquiring pieces. You know, look at what the Cubs did. How many second baseman, shortstop type players did they have in their system? And then they're athletic enough that you can spread them out, do what you need to with them. I'm not saying that this person is... He's not Javier Baez. No, he's not Javier he Baez. Doesn't have he's a not Addison Russell. He's not any of those guys. He's just a he's he's just just up. guy. Again, he's but going to be 21. Going to, so he's young. Somebody. So I guess power can develop. Yes. But if you look at his numbers, there's no power. I mean, nope. None. So where's the plus? I mean, does he have a cannon for our arm that I don't know about? Where's the high upside here? That's what I don't get in. It was asked to David Sturz, the general manager of the Brewers, about, man, how many shortstops and second basemen do you need in one farm system? And he said what you said, which is, look, we're going to get as many people as we can, and who knows, down the line, maybe some of these pieces can help us get other pieces. But how much value do you think K-Ron had? Well, obviously not much based on that trade. And that's my point. Which is amazing you, you, to me, you, isn't it? He's yeah. had over what? Eight, he's got 85, 86 saves, something like that in the last two years, and he's got no value? You have a guy that is commanding how much that the Brewers are paying him? Nine million. Nine, Nine million. million. And you have an age factor there. I don't care. He has been rock solid, Greg. If you've looked at him over the last two years, and you take his closer number, opportunities versus saves versus others, he's right there amongst the bets. For whatever reason, nobody wants to touch this guy. Now, I'll admit, when they traded with him for him from the Mets years ago, I'm like, man, I don't know, clubhouse guy and everything else. Not only has he fit in, he's been a great clubhouse guy for this team. They haven't had any issues that I know with K-Rod whatsoever. In fact, they traded him once already to the Orioles, remember? Mm -hmm. And then the guy they got for him totally flaked out, and he's, he's not even in the Brewers minor league system anymore. But he stunk in Baltimore. He came back to the Brewers the next offseason when nobody thought he'd come back and right back on track and performing again with two more contracts. So is this going to be another scenario where he's going to go to Detroit, not going to work, and come right back to Milwaukee? If it does, well, maybe the Brewers will maybe develop. Maybe you I don't know. But it, right now, you're saving money mm -hmm. and you're getting players. You're From your filling perspective. up the minor league system. I don't have a problem with it because you aren't going to need him. I agree. Is what you were going to get back what sure. fans want? No, probably not. But you're talking about a closer on another team that really isn't. I don't know why they traded for. I know they don't have a closer because Joe Nathan Correct. has got arm problems. Yep. They struggled with that position last year. Are the Tigers thinking they're going to contend next year? No. I mean, Verlander we'll hasn't been the same. You know, you still have Miguel Cabrera, but he's getting really a there in a couple games last yeah, year where he was okay. He's not, not consistent. consistent. No. And once David Price left, mm -hmm. you did not have, you know, you already lost Max Scherzer. You lost David Price. You don't have the rotation that you did two, three years yeah, ago. but there's free agency. Yes, there is. And I, I grant that. But you're also looking at you have an aging Victor Martinez. Mm -hmm. You have an aging Miguel Cabrera who mm -hmm. was injured a lot last year. The Tigers are an older team, and I think they're beginning to see their decline. Maybe they're trying to melt that one more year, but I don't think they were. I don't think the Brewers are going to get a lot for a closer because unless you're talking about the highest end closer, there isn't a lot of value because you can always find a middle level closer. And I think that makes all the sense in the world. I don't disagree with you. So, how much value should you expect for Lucroy? Because that's this is the guy that's been hurt. Didn't play well last year, but has two years left on his deal and showed you that he can be one of the best in baseball when healthy. So, if I'm an opposing general manager, what kind of leverage do I have against the Brewers? 
because apparently there's several teams interested in Lucroy, but I had heard from a reporter in Atlanta that the price is going to be high. So the Braves said, mm, don't know if I want to go that high. So they brought back Krasinski and didn't want to deal with it. The price should be high, but you also have to understand at some point, if, you, if you're going to resign him and if you're going to be giving up a lot, to get, if you're going to give up the high price tag, you should have the expectation to that, you're, that you're going to keep them. Right. So given that, you're going to have to pay him. Mm -hmm. Now, you're paying him, give me his age. What is he, 30? Around 30 years old? Okay, like around area. 30 years old. I'm not even sure. Yeah, let's say, the, but that's right okay. about the number. If you're at 28, 29, 30, and you're paying him for the big contract, you're talking a certain number of years. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're going to be dealing with his transition to first base because he's not going to be a catcher. And if he is, you're going to start seeing production decline. And I think the lesson that most teams learn... Can I ask you a question? You, this is what I don't understand. I don't understand why Joe Maurer goes to first base and now everybody thinks every catcher has to go to first base. Yadier Molina has been a catcher forever at that position. And he has not moved. A.J. Brzezinski has been a catcher forever at his position. He has not moved. Why is it always the assumption if it's a young player at catcher that can hit the ball that he has to move to first base? You're dealing a little bit with apples and oranges here because when you look at Yadier Molina, you have an elite defensive catcher. A.J. Brzezinski was not an elite defensive catcher, but he was a decent catcher that could hit. Mm -hmm. But he never played another position. A.J. Pruszynski never went to first. He never went to well, the outfield. Well, Lucroy never would have went to first had we filled the position after fielder. Of course, but he that did. The Brewers. And he showed the potential of doing it. Mm -hmm. Maurer showed the potential of going over to first. He doesn't want to play first, right? Maurer? Lucroy. Oh, Lucroy. Does not. No. Has said so. But as the years go on, your body's going to start breaking down. Sure, knees, all that. Yeah, I get right. it. Right. So you're going to move him to a place that's safer. You, yeah. the, the example with that is Maurer because... You had the concussions, you had the injuries, and you had all that money invested in them. You have to keep them on the field. If you're going to do that with LaCroix and you're paying all that money and you're going long term, at some point you're going to have to see a slight transition. Bench did it. Mm -hmm. you know, He moved out. Maurer's done it. When you have elite hitters who you can extend their career and have an injury history... You want to move him someplace safe. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it happens. I, I, I want to see what this lineup looks like offensively when the season starts. Because people think Lucroy could dealt, could be dealt. People think Lynn could be dealt after they resign him. Yeah. People think Segura could be dealt. And then there's a the whole off-field situation where you have Santana and Chris Davis uh, out there along with Ryan Braun, and you don't have a legitimate center field fielder at this point. So do they force Santana back into center field again, even though he's not a center fielder? You know, the neat thing, though, is when you look at the Brewers' payroll, there are about five guys that are pending with free agency with the next one to two years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you Fortunately, also, Braun's not one of them. No, he has that nice long contract, but they're, the rest of your roster, more or less, you barely even reach arbitration. Right. That's how young this team is. And what about Garza? Well, I'm mean, excited to say do? You, the you, way you, the year ended last year. I mean, you, is he somebody you're bringing back, or do you make somebody take Garza with Lucroy? You can try that, but you want Lucroy, what, then you're taking Garza. Well, I'll what, take a less prospect or one lesser prospect. You can try it, but you Here's also Garza. have to consider that last year, the way that ended it was horrible. Yes, and it, 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 it sends it sends a sign that he doesn't want to work. He, did, he wants to be a starter. He doesn't want to adjust things. He doesn't want to earn his way out of the bullpen. He just wants to start. And if you look back at his career, and when he was, he did this when he was young because they tried to teach him how to pitch, and he in said, town. no, no, it was in Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota right. They looked at him and they said, no, you have to learn how to pitch. No, I want to throw my fastball. I had a good enough fastball. And they complained about it because he wanted to strike everybody out. He wouldn't pitch to contact. And... They said, okay, this is not a situation that's good for us. We're going to see what we can get from Tampa Bay. And they moved him. Okay, that's fine. But now you see that sort of thing popping up again see, where you're sitting there saying, you know what, I don't want to go to the bullpen. I'm a starting pitcher. But I, I'm look, not going to, you know. I don't have any problem with his competitive juices 
um, and the, the fire that goes along with it. Kyle Loesch handled it the right way. And yes. I'm sure it stunk for Kyle Loesch too having to go to the bullpen. But he dealt with it the right way. Garza clearly did it. And I, I said it on our post-game show during the course of the season. If I had been the Milwaukee Brewers and Craig Council, Doug Melvin, out of brought guards in, said, okay, we know you're upset. We saw your comments. You don't want to pitch out of the bullpen. You're refusing to pitch out of the bullpen. That's fine. I'll tell you what, Matt. If you don't want to pitch out of the bullpen, you can just go home or take a vacation, do whatever you want. I don't want you in this clubhouse. But I'm going to tell you this right now. You being in our starting rotation next year will solely depend on how good you are in spring training. If you get beat out by someone that has better spring training numbers than you, then you're in the bullpen or you're done. But that's how it's going to be. You want to pitch out of the bullpen the rest of the year? Then you'll be in the starting rotation and we'll give you the benefit of the doubt like we do every year. You don't want to pitch out of the bullpen, then you're going to have to earn it. And don't come crying to me if you have a 6 ERA in spring and are sitting in our bullpen as a long relief guy to the human victory cigar because I don't want to hear it. We're giving you this option right now. Now, they didn't do that. They played nice. They didn't want to ruin the relationship. They want Garza on the up and up because they know they need Garza to pitch well in the first half next year in order to trade Garza. That really is what it is. If you're going to get any value, he must pitch well in the first half of the year. Yes, or they're just looking at it like you just said. Right, or they're stuck. You're, you're looking at it saying, all right, fine, look, go into spring training next year, show us what you got, but if you don't show it, you're in the bullpen. Right. Because, you know, if there is one area that the Brewers have – some ability. Oh, yeah. It's in the pitching staff. The starting pitcher staff. Taylor yeah. Youngman, Jimmy Nelson, Willie Peralta. If yeah. you can't beat those guys out, there's no reason for you to be there. But he should be. It, the, the, the four should be set. Garza is in that rotation. Be able to beat him out. And then he Kyle Davis there. is in that rotation, yeah. right? Those are your starting five. And that's it. We should, The starting five is known right now. Unless Stearns trades somebody. Mm-hmm. And if he was, if he's able to get something where you pull both of those guys away and you get a good... A solid package back, so you're not paying for Garza's deal, mm-hmm. and you have at least something, you know, not a middle infielder, to show for Lucroy. I want to see. Then, that's great. Right. I want to see if he's willing to deal Peralta, or Nelson, or Youngman, or Davies. Is he willing to trade the young pitching? Because Greg, for what purpose? To continue to build, because that's going to tell you how long a process he thinks yes. this is. If he trades Peralta, he's saying this is going to be more than three years. If he trades Nelson, he's saying it's going to be about five. And by that time, I'm going to have to pay him a lot of money, and I can't afford to do that. So I'm going to trade him now and get a boatload, and all my guys are going to come together. All my 20, 21-year-olds are going to roll in here together. That's what I want to see. I want to see how – because he's not saying how long this is going to take. I guarantee you he's got a number in his mind, and he's not letting it out. And nor you should. Should you, David Sturz, if you're watching this, don't ever say a number. But I'm sure in his mind he has one. I think the wise thing, the wise process for this scenario is to keep your pitching and build your offense. Because if you look at and, and invest in the pitching, you can't and build afford your offense. Us. You can't afford to sign your pitching with Ryan Braun at twenty million dollars a year. But by the time it, he's signed through one, twenty twenty one, something like that. So you're talking six years. It's like another five years. About five years, and you're talking about. When those guys are coming up for free agency. Mm-hmm. So, okay, by that point, it doesn't matter. Braun's gone. Mm-hmm. He's gone. And plain and simple, and you have the young guys, now you have money available to sign. And your position players have to be through the draft and have to be good. Right. You but that you have to do, it, you brought up the Cubs. You have to do what the Cubs did. You have to look at the best position players possible. You have to get them in and they have to produce early. The problem and is then your pitching staff, which you already have, which means you're one step ahead of the Cubs anyway, right. will develop. But the other thing too is, and this is why the Brewers, I don't think, will be able to catch the Cubs unless Theo goes away, which is they did it the right way. Yes, now they have the money to get Lester. The Brewers mm-hmm. won't have that. They will have the money to get Greg here, David Price. The mm-hmm. Brewers won't have that. So everything they do will have to be homegrown. The Cubs have the money to go get international players and big crazy amounts of money to get guys like Soler. They have the ability to go get top name free agent pitchers to add to what they have. They still have to draft well, sure, but they have the money to pay everybody. The Brewers aren't going to have that. The Brewers are going to be on the compete for five years, rebuild. Compete for five years, rebuild. That's how it's going to have to be, Milwaukee. The Cubs can compete at a high level for a long time, providing Theo drafts well. Here's your problem with that. And that is, you have the Cubs way, and you have the Cardinal way. 
The Cardinal way isn't paying a lot of players. It isn't sell shelling out big money. And when the big money is necessary, Regret. they stay within or they find a bargain and they bring them in like John Lackey. They're the yeah. only team in baseball that does it. Yeah, They're, that's but, right. But it's Why unfair. can't there be another one? You, it's unfair. You have a situation where you could pull that off. I understand. I just think it's unfair. I hate when people bring up the Cardinals. Because it's like people in the in the division of the Packers say, "Well, the Packers Packers got back to back Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Why can't we?" Because it's not no. that easy. No, it's not. It's, it's not, not that, that easy. easy to do what the Cubs are doing either. Well, it's a lot easier to to build and compete for five years, rebuild, build and compete for five years, rebuild. That's a more likely scenario for the Brewers than saying. Go make the playoffs ten of the next thirteen years. No, no, I'm not saying fifteen that. years like the Cardinals. I'm not. We got to wrap that. it up. We've yeah, gone too long. He's Greg Geese. <laughs> of the Racine Journal Times. I've seen Sparky fight, but we'll talk to you next time here at RacingSportsZone.com.